Hey winner, it's Coach JC, and I want to welcome you to the Win All Day podcast show. I am Coach JC, and I am honored to be your coach today and help you win more in life. After overcoming hitting rock bottom, throwing away my story, fighting to be a father in a custody battle over $400,000 in debt, depressed and suicidal, I was able to create a new story for my life. I was able to take my greatest pain and make it my greatest purpose. Since that time, I have been on a mission. I have invested, studied, and absorbed everything and anything that I could get my hands on when it comes to motivation and performance. I am absolutely obsessed with everything personal development, and my calling in life is helping other people just like you to win more in life. For the last 15 years, I've been so blessed to build a personal brand around what I love to do. Start five companies, a nonprofit, author five books, professionally speak, coach, and train people from all walks of life when it comes to motivation, mindset, and performance. See, I believe everyone was born a winner. That you can win. That you will win. That you must win. I believe everyone has a purpose. And my goal is to give you what you need to live life with passion, on purpose, and win all day. You were born a winner. It's time to create your new story, to do life on your terms, to live a life on purpose, with passion. And I want to coach you to do just that. Once again, welcome to the Win All Day Podcast Show. All right. What's going on, winners? Hey, Coach JC here, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Win All Day Podcast Show. You know what? I'm so stoked. I'm bringing my guest on right now. I, I Listen, I don't want his good looks to distract you, man, because I want to give him a formal introduction. But this is my main man, Eddie. You're going to get to meet him in just a minute. But here's how we like to kick off every episode with our guests, man. We believe that there's power in your words and that if you want to live a life of winning, that you got to speak winning and not speak defeat and losing. So we do this with every guest, Eddie. I'm going to I'm gonna kick it off with the win all day winning confession, brother. And I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Are you ready? I'm ready, baby. Today is my day. Today is my day. Nothing will get in my way. Nothing will get in my way. Of me being the best. Of me being the best. Version of me. Version of me. I am here on purpose. I am here on purpose. I have a purpose. I have a purpose. I am strong. I am strong. I am passionate. I am passionate. I am fearless. I am fearless. I choose faith. I choose faith. I am a winner. I am a winner. I will win. I will win. And win all day. And win all day, baby. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I, I think you gave every guest a run for their money, bro. I appreciate the enthusiasm. I'm excited to jump in with you. Man, I want to give a, a, a quick, you know, informal introduction to my man. This is my friend. Uh, man, I'm rooting for this guy in a big way. I cannot wait for you guys to hear from him. This is Eddie Malouf, who is the founder and CEO of Four Media Marketing, one of the fastest growing full service e-commerce and info product marketing agencies in the entire U.S., with over 800 million per year in managed revenue, with over 250 full-time hires in his company just in over the last two years. And he's put together some of the best and brightest minds in marketing under one brand, his four media marketing brand. Him and his team have worked with over 108 figure brands. And he has been able to create strategies in the digital space that have been excelled brands to new peaks in profit. He manages this while helping coach young agency owners to find the same success that he did with his company, 4 Media. And the greatest part of everything is his amazing wife and his daughter. He resides in the great state of Atlanta, Georgia, with his wife and business partner, Terry, and their beautiful daughter, Milana. So please welcome, without further ado, my man, the myth, the legend, the one and only to the Win All Day podcast show, Mr. Eddie Malouf. What's up, my guy? My man, thank you for having me, baby. I'm ready to just win all day with you on this podcast, man. Hey, man, I'm so stoked, man. And I'm excited to have you, man. I, I, I love who you are. Man, we met years ago. I don't even know how many years ago at an event in San Diego, right? Um, how many years ago was that? Maybe six, seven? Billy Jean's 2018, event? 2018, 
2018 probably 2018 yeah it was five years it was almost five years ago bro almost five years ago man we yeah. sat we sat in those chairs at billy jean's uh place out at um san diego i got to interact with you meet your wife and i just felt like we had a you know hit it off at that time we stayed connected ever since man i've watched you grow i've watched you build uh love who you are as a man love who you are as a dad a husband everything you're doing in the space obviously online as well and we're going to get into that today man so I'm excited to have you, bro. I appreciate the energy with the win all day winning confession too. Um, even though your fantasy football team is losing, and we talked about that earlier. So <laughs> <laughs> look, let me let me say something real quick. You mentioned my good looks when we first started, and I don't have much of those, but uh I, I wanna I wanna say when I first met you, uh I fucking I will never forget how fucking insanely shredded you were are every i was like dude i could not stop like no homo just looking and being like dude this guy is fucking insane i wish my body looked like that like you're on another level of discipline and fitness dude and you still hold it to this day so much man. respect to you i know that is not easy at all i love it bro i appreciate that man so let's do this man i want to jump in and i always like to do this there's obviously going to be guests of mine that maybe not aren't in this space that we're in and they might not know who you are so just introduce yourself i gave a very informal introduction or formal, whatever you want to call it. But take us back, man. Where are you from? How'd you get to where you are today? All the success that we read earlier, man. Then we'll jump into this episode, brother. Cool. Yeah. So I run a marketing agency, like you said. Uh, I work with a ton of like e-commerce brands and coaches and for products, stuff like that. Um, I started this journey. Uh, so for reference, for everyone listening, I'm 29. Um, I started this journey when I was about 20 years old. Uh, so about nine years ago, almost going on 10 in a few months. Um, and essentially what happened was uh, I was super into like social media and I was like, man, there's, there's gotta be a way to like run ads on these platforms. And at the time, like Facebook ads didn't even exist. Uh, then they one time got released. And the only way I found out was just seeing a post in my feed that said sponsored. And I was like, okay, the, how, how'd they do that? And I dug, I dug, there was no videos, no articles. Took me like, dude, it took me 14 hours sitting in front of a laptop in a dorm room uh, trying to crack the code to running one single Facebook ad. And eventually I did, I ran an ad for $10 a day. Uh, and that $10 was making us like hundreds a day. Um, and this was for my family's businesses. They basically run like birthday party businesses for kids. Um, so I started running ads and I mean, for 10 bucks a day, moms were booking like five, $600 birthday parties every single day. Um, wow. and that was, that was like the first step. And, um, I was like, dude, this is cool. This is something that I could really get into. And believe it or not, at the time I used to look like you, man, I was, uh, I was shredded. I was super into fitness and I'm from the middle East in Lebanon. So, uh, very, uh, poor country overall. There's like no middle class. That's either you're super rich or you're super poor. Uh, and fitness was not a thing. Like gyms were super tiny. They weren't super serious. No one was actually putting money into like nice gym equipment, stuff like that. But I started recognizing that more people got, were getting into fitness because of Instagram, right? They started seeing like all these huge supplement brands like EHP labs, shreds, those kind of guys who were buying influencers up and they started getting influenced by them. And so there started becoming a big fitness culture. And in the middle East, everyone uses like fake supplements. They, they, these companies buy supplements, they open them and they basically like dilute the powder with other, um, mixing things in there. And then basically like, it's not actually like pure creatine or pure protein or whatever it is. Right. They dilute it to make more margin. So I was like, you know what, let me just bring like the best shit ever into the Middle East. So um, as a 20 year old, I actually, 19, yeah, 20 year old, I basically um, flew to Vegas to the uh, Olympia, uh, which is like the biggest fitness conference. And I snuck into meetings uh, with all the owners of all the top brands down to like billionaires um, and just you know, snuck into those rooms and found a seat at the table and got those meetings done. And I signed uh, 12 of the top 15 uh, companies uh, that were selling supplements to give me exclusivity to sell their stuff in the Middle East. And I think what people don't realize is like, how did you do that as a 20 year old? Dude, I prepared, man. I, I signed I signed influencers up in the Middle East between Dubai, Lebanon, all these other countries that were very active in the fitness space. I came with a 40 page marketing plan that I spent like three months writing so that I could come to the table and execute. And I think a lot of people in business in general think they could just like show up unprepared. And uh, I think, I think when you're, when you're not prepared, uh, there are so many opportunities that just go right in front of you because you weren't prepared for that moment and for that opportunity. And uh, I recognized that early on in life, thankfully to my dad being in business and seeing him, um, not necessarily listening to him, but more seeing things that passed in front of him because he wasn't 
prepared for that opportunity at the time. So I knew if I had this one shot to walk in the door, I'm not going to sit here empty handed. I'm going to come with the best shot I possibly have if I only got one. Uh, so I spent like six months as, you know, they say sharpening my axe before I swung it came to the table at Olympia and closed these billionaires as a 20 year old. I couldn't even legally drink. They're inviting me out to drinks and uh, I had to decline just so they wouldn't find out that I couldn't legally drink. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so that was kind of the start of my digital marketing journey as a whole. Uh, from there, long story short, there's a lot of corruption in the Middle East. I just didn't want to deal with all the politics. So two years later, I ended up shutting down that project, um, even though it was making, you know, I was trying to make a massive impact in the Middle East in the supplement and fitness space. And uh, I basically went into fully digital marketing. I said, if, if someone can control my income by just some paperwork or some political, you know, decision that has no relevance to the law or anything like that. This isn't something I want to do. I want to work in a world where no one can control me. Um, and so that's why I got into the online digital space. And then from there, I decided to start an agency, go get some clients, a lot of hardships uh, to get to where I'm at today. Uh, but now we are about six years from the date that I made that decision and about two years from the date that I decided to actually build this into a company and a business instead of just being the digital marketing guy. Wow, bro. Yeah. Amazing, man. And so I tricked you to be on this podcast, bro. Your story's cool, but you talked about, you know, taking your best shot. So let's talk about what we really want to talk about. This is the great debate that I want to have that Michael Jordan's the GOAT and LeBron's not. So let's get into that. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Hey, I always, I always have to tease my guy, man. When I see something about Michael Jordan, these young kids nowadays don't realize he's the GOAT. So I got to send it to my guy, Eddie, and, and let him know. But hey, I don't know, man. I didn't see Michael playing in, <laughs> in year 21 and still being, you know, at the top of the list. So hey, that's true, man. Hey, uh, but you said something about, you know, take your best shot, right? Michael Jordan said, you know, it, it, you'll miss 100% of shots you don't take. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think you said so many powerful things just in the story, man. Like the preparation side of it is huge at 20 years old for you to be able to say, man, I'm going to. I'm going to gain confidence by being ready when I go in to Vegas and try to sell these guys, right? When you're prepared, you're more confident. When I'm speaking on stages, bro, people don't realize. My wife's like, you're locking yourself in a room. Like, I'm prepping, even though I did the same talk maybe a hundred times, but that's what leads to confidence to show up. And so I want you to talk about that, and then I want to get into uh, where the best Baba Ganoush is, because you're Lebanese, right? <laughs> Come on. You gotta, so funny. <laughs> you, got, you got to eat some Baba Ganoush, right? <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, uh, so where do you want to start? You want to start on the uh, the preparation side of things? Yeah, I, I want to talk about the motivator first. At that time, the motivator, I I'm a big believer in finding a purpose that is big enough that gets you to do things you don't feel like doing. At 20 years old, are you like, I got to create financial freedom for my family? I'm seeing what's going on in Lebanon. What was the motivator deep down inside at 20 years old for you to say, I'm going to put together a 40 page presentation? What was the driver, man, for you to go to Vegas to do these things that most 20 year olds, most 40 year olds won't do? Right. Yeah. What I was it? That. So uh, it's a couple things. It's it's a mix. So uh, like you said, one, there needs to be a big purpose to do big things, right? Like I'm not going to sit here and fork out all my money as a 20 year old travel between middle East and Vegas back and forth and deal with supplier. There's a lot more to it than just flying to Vegas. Right. But, um, th there's a lot of shit. At one point I broke down in, in actual tears. I was like, I can't overcome this. It's impossible. Uh, I'll never forget that moment. It was literally like I had the hardest day ever. I was dealing with a lot of political issues and this is the, it's a funny story, but I went into McDonald's and I, it was just like the convenient thing on the way. And it was pouring rain and someone was driving me. So I like got two drinks and, and food. And in the time that I ran from the door to the car, the handle of the drinks like deteriorated from the water. And so I opened the door of the car, I went inside and both the drinks fell, exploded all over the car. And this was like, I'm already at an all time low, just based on some stuff that's not falling through that I wanted. I wanted like, I was like, this is how it's going to go. And it didn't go that way. And I just sat there and just like cried for like 15 minutes. I was just like, I don't think I can overcome this and eventually pulled myself out of it. I, I say all that to say in order to get through stuff like that, there needs to be a bigger purpose, right? So my purpose in the in that Lebanon project, in the Middle East project was these people are getting into fitness and there's a massive hole in the market where people are giving fake supplements and selling people them at full price. And if I can sit here and bring the best top shelf supplements into this space, I can not only impact the health of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in these countries, uh, but at the end of the day, I can provide a solution that will also 
provide financial success and freedom for myself, right? Like if I can come in here and solve this problem that's for the greater good for tens of thousands of people, I will automatically be rewarded for doing so. And so don't get me wrong, as good as the purpose was, if I was doing it for free and I had no financial outcome of it or expected financial outcome, I would not have gone to those lengths, especially as a 20 year old to do so. So it takes both. It takes, I think the financial side to knowing like, Hey, there is a reward for me for all this hard work. And it's not just going to be like a thank you. Uh, and number two, all this hard work is doing something that's big, right. Which is, which yeah. is kind of like to, to kind of spin off that. And on a tangent real quick, like I, my first, you know, six, seven years of marketing, I, I was really good at marketing and I did it for other companies and they paid me directly, but I was essentially like a freelancer representing myself as a business, right? Like when you met me, it was like me, my current wife and like maybe a VA, you know what I mean? It was like two, three of us. It wasn't anything crazy because I was just focused on like, okay, let me just do my work and make the money. And then one day, you know, when I was just like, you know, when you're, when you're making 40, 50 K a month, let's say, um, you kind of just like, okay, I don't really need much more than this. Like, unless I'm going to go buy yachts and private jets and like 40, 50 K I can do whatever I want in, in, in Atlanta, Georgia, you know what I mean? So, um, I was like, look, if my worst case scenario is 40, 50 K a month, like if I can always fall back on this, why not just like go bigger? So, uh, that's when I decided to like actually build a company. I was like, dude, if I could have hundreds of team members, who all have families and I can financially support all these people and work with thousands of clients who are all impacting the world in a positive way as well. I could not only impact the hundreds of people that I'm financially supporting and providing them opportunity, but I can also impact millions of customers through the brands that we're working with. Um, And even just the other day, we're looking at it just on the coaching side of our business. We looked at like how many hundreds of thousands of students we've enrolled into programs and thinking how many of those people have like financial freedom, success, they support their entire family on the information and the coaching that they've learned. And all, when you track it back, it was because we ran the ads to get them to the sale, to get them to do that and realizing the impact that we're making on like literally tens of millions of people over time uh, through the stuff that we're doing. And, and that's what empowers you to do bigger shit because at some point money becomes like, insignificant it's just adding to a bank account that has no significance to your actual day-to-day life you know what i mean i love it bro so that that's your purpose and your reason now right correct i mean you want to help other people create financial freedom and and have what you have is that is that what i heard you say yeah so right now i'll tell you what's driving me the most right now is um the passion to bring uh, a players all together in, in the same place. So, uh, whether it's through, uh, my agency founders conference that I do once a year where I get like the top agency guys in one room, whether it's my business where I literally built an entire recruiting department just to go recruit the most talented people in all these other companies to bring them to mine. So that we have one place where the brightest people are all collaborating and innovating and not just doing this cookie cutter stuff that everyone else wants to do just to like make another buck. I want to be, I want to be different. I want to, I want to be bold. I want to be disruptive. Uh, and I want to stand out and I want people to literally be in high school and college and be like, I want to work for that company because that company is like doing it different. They're, they're polarizing, they're standing out of the crowd and, and they're bringing really talented people together. And and that's really what drives me right now is building a culture where it's that level of excellence and people literally want to do whatever they can to work for this company, which is already kind of starting to happen, which is pretty cool to see. I love it, bro. I love it. I love it. Powerful story. Hey, I want to talk to the viewer or the listener really quick because you said some powerful things I don't want to miss. You know, I think so much of life is about decisions, Eddie, on a daily basis, right? There was definitely times where you spilt, you know, the the the, the one story of the drinks from McDonald's in the car and you're crying and you know, if, if you, I always tell people this, man, if you don't quit, you can't fail, right? I've been through a lot of hardships myself. And I think there's people listening right now that if that's the only reason that you tune in to this podcast with Eddie Maloof and Coach JC in the Win All Day podcast was to hear, don't quit before the breakthrough. Like, don't stop before the miracle. Like, don't quit on yourself before what you desire. Like, decisions, the most important decision I believe for somebody listening right now is, are you going to go all in? Are you going to be all in? It doesn't matter if it's the marriage, the career, the business, the ministry, whatever, your health. It's less important on right now for you listening on what you choose and more important that no matter what happens, that life doesn't happen to you, but life happens for you and you go all in. And it's much better to go all in and fail than to hold back and never have success and have to say, what if? 
or if only. And so I just want to talk to somebody listening today or watching. I hope his uh, Eddie's story motivates you and inspires you from that story of dropping the, the soda, the drinks in his car, crying, wanting to give up to just not quitting to where he is today. So I appreciate you sharing that, brother. And so, of course, man, man talk, talk about this a little, like the transition to go from, because I do remember when it was you and uh, who's your right-hand guy? Fredo, right? Fredo, Fredo yep. Yes, he's still with you? Yep, of course. He's still my business partner. Oh, man. So I love that guy. So I remember it was just you and him and, and wifey, right? And then wifey was pregnant or something. I don't remember. She No, she was working. She was kind of working outside doing other stuff, right? And yep. so, you know, talk about the transition, man. I, I think there's a person listening where they say, man, I would love to have a big business. Some people don't want the big business. Some people are fine, not 250 employees and doing that. Talk about the transition and what it took, maybe from a skill set for you, maybe from a mindset perspective, or maybe from a leadership perspective for you to go from 40K a month, you know, two employees to 250 and dominating an industry. Um, so it takes a few things. Uh, one, uh, I think, uh, I don't know who said this quote, but uh, basically like what you've done you know, what got you here is not what's going to get you to where you want to go. You know what I mean? A uh, general concept here. And so I recognize that like me being the guy who runs the ads every day and sends the emails and writes everything every day is not going to be what allows me to build a company. So uh, number one was delegation, I think is super important. Now the key here when you delegate, because uh, a lot of people do it wrong and I, I did it wrong for years was I would go and I'd try to hire someone at the cheapest price I possibly could, even if they didn't have too much experience uh, because I didn't have money. And then I'd spend all my time training this person to do the job that I'm trying to do. And now I'm basically working two jobs because I'm still doing the job and then I'm training this person to also do the job. Uh, so it's kind of like doubling down on my time. And looking back, one, I would have hired based on experience, not on potential. Uh, I never hire on potential anymore. I only hire based on experience. And if I had done that earlier, uh, I think I would be a lot further. So number one is delegation. I think that's uh, the hardest piece because not only do you have to give someone the responsibility that you're usually better at, but you also have to fork out a percentage of your income that you're making to be able to bring that person on board. So um, that's number one delegation, which leads me right into the concept of sometimes you have to take two steps backward to take like 10 steps forward. Um, delegation is a part of it, right? I have to cut my income to bring someone on board to be able to handle more and increase my income. That's an example. Another example is like COVID hit. Our entire business was based on not an entire business, but majority of our business was based on local businesses, businesses that literally depended on being open and getting customers in the door. And when COVID hit and there was a shutdown in the entire country, we lost 90% of our revenue as a company in one hour, like not even like a week to like one hour, everyone texts at the same time, please wow. cancel, please cancel. And I'm not going to sit here and tell them, sorry, it's a 30 day cancellation, all this stuff. Like I understand their situation. They also have employees that they have to pay wow. and we're all going through it together. Right. So I have to cancel all these contracts, all our income that was there. Uh, and I had already delegated a few things. Like I had delegated sales to someone else. I had delegated other tasks to other people. And I, you know, back to the two steps backward thing, I said, okay, listen, scratch all that. I'm the best salesperson here. And if we're going to dig out of this hole without firing anyone on the team, then I need to be in the sales position so that I can grow the company the quickest possible way to get to where we are at, you know, yesterday, not today. Um, and so I stepped down from my role of the manager and the leader, and I just went right to phone calls and sales, just like it was day one. And I had no income at all. Wow. Uh, and by 30 days later, we had grown the company from the point it was the day before uh, everyone decided to cancel. Um, and so I think being a servant leader and understanding that sometimes you have to step down and take a couple steps back to take a bunch more forward, I think is one of the hardest things that you do as a business owner, because like in a normal job, if you're promoted to manager, you're not going to sit there and get undemoted or you're going to, you're not going to get demoted for a week or yeah. two weeks or three weeks. You know what I mean? Um, as a business owner, I mean, sometimes you got to be the owner and sometimes you got to be the guy cleaning the toilets at the end of the yeah. day, depending on the day. Right. And so swallowing that ego and understanding that and coming from a servant leadership mentality, I think is uh, one, one of the most important things that's helped me get here. And then uh, I'd say last uh, but not least um, is like actually creating a, a product that is good enough for people to keep talking about. 
Um, I think too many people, especially in the agency space, we're all taught like, dude, just go get clients, get a bunch of clients. You're going to lose a bunch of clients, but you're going to get a bunch more clients. And because you're going to get more than you're going to lose, you know, you're just going to make a ton of money and go do that. Uh, whereas I was always very conscious of my reputation. Uh, no one can say anything bad about me or my company. All they can say is we worked with them and uh, we weren't as successful as we thought. That's it. Like that's the max that someone can say. Uh, I've always done right by people. I've always like put good energy out into the world. I've always given refunds for things that we weren't able to achieve without even people asking. I've always built the long-term game. I'm, I, from the beginning, when I do something, am not the type of person that's going to sit there and switch because a crypto opportunity came up or a real estate opportunity came up, or I see so many people switching careers every year because there's a new thing that's hot, AI, crypto, whatever it is. I said, listen, I'm going to be in marketing for five to 10 years minimum. And so all the relationships I'm going to build and everything that I'm going to do is for the future of this business. Even to this day, 2023, I am reaping the rewards finally of relationships that I invested in, in 2019, in 2020, that nothing happened. No money came from it. No, opportunity yeah. but now in 2023 because i've stuck true to my lane and i've stayed and i don't have this optimism of all these other opportunities there are because i believe you can make money plumbing or doing trash everything has money and at the end of the day it's just about being focused and getting to the top 0.1 percent of what that industry is and that's what i've stuck with and you know if there's any advice i give to people who are starting a business it's like pick your lane and stay in that lane and go as far down that lane as you possibly can because People, people turn off that lane a lot sooner than you. And if you're the last one in that lane at the end of the day, that means you're the best one in the lane and people are going to recognize that. They're going to come to you for that thing that you do. And, you know, I think too many people get distracted because there's like an opportunity here, an opportunity there. And they just, they, they start looking left or right too much as opposed to looking straight ahead. And when your energy isn't all focused in the same spot, you know, you feel it and your business feels it and your income starts feeling it too. So uh, that, that's probably the main three pieces of advice I think that have taken me to where I'm at today. Not that I'm even anywhere crazy, but yeah, you know, definitely I would not have expected I was here three years ago for sure. Powerful, bro. I love it. You said so many amazing things in there and I appreciate you sharing that. You know, it's so, I think it's so easy nowadays too, with people that there's so many opportunity out there, right? Everybody, everywhere you go, especially online, people are trying to sell you on a program, develop this skill set. You'll make 10,000 a month, 30,000 a month. And I see people jumping from one thing to the next thing. Even what I do, I'm involved in a lot of different things, but they all tie into the personal brand, the consulting, the personal development, the life coaching, the fitness space. Like it all ties together. It's not like, hey, I'm trying to do run a roofing company over here. And then I'm trying to run a digital marketing agency over here. It's so easy to get, you know, the old, what's the old, uh, the old you try to chase two rabbits, you won't catch any or whatever, right? Yeah. So, I appreciate you sharing that. I feel like somebody needed to hear that. Hey, talk to us about this real quick. So when it comes to your company, right? I want to talk about culture, right? You're, you're, you're obviously developing and have developed as a leader. You had to go through some things to develop as a leader. Obviously with 250 team members, they're all not in Atlanta. You have some remote team members as well, correct? Like what, like I, I am brought into organizations to build winners and winning teams. And a big part of it is culture. And we have an MVP process that we go through to get clarity on. And I think it's one of the hardest things that leaders deal with and entrepreneurs deal with. And when they build a team is keeping the culture that is true to their principles. What are some of the things that you're doing that you have done to build a culture where people want to work for you and, 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 and to keep the culture strong within the team, you know, in what you do at four media brother. Great question. So um, let me preface this and say how important it is. Um, I have paid millions of dollars to people for coaching, uh, including, you know, when, when you and I met, right? And um, every time, the first like 30% of the entire time was like vision, culture, core values, like all this stuff that I just, I'm like, dude, why are we talking about this? Like, I paid you thousands of dollars. I want you to share with me like how you do your marketing, how you do your sales, how you do this, how, whatever. Right. Uh, but yeah, everyone focused so much on that culture, the core values part. I just never really understood it until I started building a company. And the thing is, as you build a company, uh, when it's like five to 10 of you, it's very easy to keep the culture without having a code. It's like, we all know we're working hard. We all know we're trying to win. We're all on the same page. As that company grows, more people are involved, more opinions are involved, more directions happen. And when you have a hundred people 
and you know everyone's moving in a slightly different direction you don't have an organized ship and you can't move it forward properly right and so it's very important to develop like a code a culture code in your company so uh for us like our core values are are very growth driven uh very team driven uh i'll give you an example of a few of them uh like nobody's bigger than the team we took that one from the patriots uh that was a run that the patriots went on and they yeah. showed that like because our culture is so strong we can trade out our best player on defense put in someone that's not the best player and actually washed up and retired and we can still win a championship because nobody's bigger than the team uh, always be growing uh, all in or nothing um the, these are the kind of culture the the culture values that we build around our company uh so everyone on the team talks about these every single morning uh when it comes to monday i do a monthly call with the team we talk about these every single uh time as well uh we do two things that are super huge in our company we have a dubs channel which is wins uh, and everyone's required to put a dub in the channel every single month uh, whether it's a personal dub or whether it's a work dub so like here's a project that i worked on and i got some really cool results and here's how or like hey guys i got married this month and this has been a huge thing xyz personal achievement uh, and everyone that doesn't do it i make them dance to a really silly song like uh, you know, like, uh, like a teapot song, for example, uh, in front of the entire company the next month. Uh, so we're building a culture of like sharing wins and being very vocal about it and sharing them. Cause I think a lot of times, uh, people have a misconception of like sharing wins is bragging or flexing yeah. or, uh, or pride or super prideful, you know, but really in, in a culture where we want to win, I want the sales team to see all the wins that we're doing for the clients that they're bringing in. Right. They bring on yeah. these clients. And then they see, wow, I brought that person in and we just doubled his entire business. That's huge. And and if we start creating a culture of winning all fucking day, am I right, Coach JC? All if we day, create bro. a culture of winning and I and we we publicly are, are not afraid to talk about these wins and and be able to say, hey, I did this, that is a lot of self-fulfillment internally for each person as well. And I think a lot of people don't talk about their wins because we're so conditioned to, to consider it as bragging or showing off or flexing versus, Hey, I want to share this awesome achievement that I have instead of bottling it up inside me and not being able to share it with other people. So that's something we do. That's I think as small as it is, goes such a long way Love it. Uh, in the culture. And then last thing we do a challenge every single month. So like last month I did a $10,000 challenge. Um, essentially what I did was I broke up the team, the company into like five, six teams. And I said, I'm giving away $10,000. Here's a challenge. You guys are going to do X, Y, Z. I can't really spoil it. Cause it's probably not going to come out till well after this uh, podcast is released. Yeah. But basically now the team is building their own teams with people they've never worked with in the company with in random positions and trying to coordinate how are we all going to work together to win at this project that Eddie gave us Love so it. we can win the $10,000 prize pool. And it's, it's, it's a culture of winning, but it's a culture of growth inside and outside the business. And I expect people to be all in or nothing at home with their family as well as all in or nothing when they're at work. And I expect them to always be growing, not only when they're at work, but I expect them to always be growing in their personal life, whether it's the relationship with their family, whether it's their fitness, whether it's their, uh, their mentality or their education. Um, I think it's so important that you keep, it's like beating a dead horse. You have to, you have to mention these things every single week and every single call and every opportunity you can so that it becomes a core, a core value, not just a word that's on a website or a word that the CEO reads out, but an actual core value. And I, I see my team now who have been with me for six months or more embody these core values and always bring them up and always tie things in their personal life to the core values of the company. And that's the reason why they're achieving those things in their personal life. So you just got to drill it over and over and over and over again. You have to turn it into an actual, like, like people need to know this thing inside out better than they know their own life at the end of the day. Dude, I love it, bro. I love it. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know you were doing that. I love it. I'm glad you went there. I mean, that's, I just was with an organization earlier today. And like, you know, I, I the, the problem that I see going into these organizations and we get to deal with agencies, first responding agencies, you know, companies, different levels, different sizes, and also athletic teams is many leaders, man, opposite of what you're doing, getting these teams engaged in culture to talk about wins outside of just the business right? Many leaders spend so many hours with their teams in meetings on the professional development, on the skill, on numbers and making sure we're hitting quota. But very few, if any, that I start to work with, um, spend any time on the actual person, the development of the person outside of their, I hired them for this. They're great at this skill set. 
And so when I come in, I sell against leadership. I say, you don't need another leadership book or trainer. What you need is to build great leaders. And if they want to, if you want to build great leaders, you first, these, the first person that these people need to learn how to lead is themselves. And so when the person becomes better on the team and the person feels valued and appreciated and celebrated and whoa, Eddie cares more about me than just the numbers Wow, he asked about my family. When the person becomes better, the player becomes better and pro pro uh, production and performance increases. And your people are your most valuable asset. That's what drives your business. So when you invest in the personal growth, just as much as you do as the professional growth and development, you know, you start to value the person just as much or even over production and production increases. And companies are like, What'd you do? You wouldn't even talk about numbers. I'm like, no, I'm building your people. Your people are happy. They want to win. They want to work for you. They didn't even know you before. And you know what about that? I think there's also a lot of meaning. And I hear it in your voice, how you get fired up. There's a lot more meaning and purpose and fulfillment in being a transformational leader like you're doing, caring about these people and wanting to see them win in their family and their fine, rather than just checking in and punching a clock and going to the job another day. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like you were talking about that, yo. Like, like I felt like, bro, that like, you, I felt like you, this, this, this energy stirred up in you. Like you love that about your company. And I respect that about you, man. That's big time, brother. Thank you. Dude. I appreciate that. And uh, it's definitely not an easy thing to do, especially when you're running a for-profit business and yep. numbers are the most important thing and all these things. I think it's very hard sometimes to sit there and, uh, Remember that all these people have a million personal problems happening in their life as well. They have a million things going on uh, that they're bottling up inside and not sharing. And I think it's very important to, you know, give them a safe place to be able to do so and feel secure. And like you said, at the end of the day, it's going to increase performance, right? If they feel more proud to work with you yep. at the end of the day, they're only going to, you know, go further for you and and do more. So. Yeah, I tell all the companies, Eddie, it's like, the, you, you, just like you have systems for business, you just have to have systems for it, right? That's it. Have systems for, like you did, the dub, like, that's awesome, you know? But let me ask you this question, man. We're talking about winning, winning all days, the brand. How does Eddie Maloof define winning? I, and you might, you could say success. That's fine as well. It's the same thing, interchangeable, but it's all relative, man. There's not a right or wrong answer, but I always like asking people that are successful and that we have on the show. I had you on the show because you represent what winning looks like. And I wanted to inspire and motivate other people that, you know, God's no respecter of person, man. If Eddie was able to do it, man, I can do it. And so how does Eddie Maloof define winning or success? What is winning or success to you, brother? Um, I think it's, uh, in a very lame way to say it. Um, it's, I think it's, uh, it's growth with balance. So I think, I think a lot of people have growth without balance. So I see people who, uh, you know, not that there's anything wrong with it, but like, it's not what I define as success. Uh, I see people who make a lot of money, but in making a lot of money, they sacrifice their health. Uh, dramatically, or they sacrifice their relationship with their wife and they no longer have one with their wife and kids yeah. uh, and, and, and vice versa, right? You could lean the other way where like you spend so much time with your wife and kids and you're in super great ripped shape, but you're broke. And so yeah. like, there's, there's a bunch of pillars in life and uh, between like uh, family and if you're religious religion and faith and health and, and just like physical side of things as well as mental, as well as financial, and I think, I think success is being able to do, to grow in all those areas at the same time without having to sacrifice the other areas to do so. And I think too many people, just like when you play a video game and you got to like pick the player or like in Mario Kart, you pick the car and each car has like speed and, you know, acceleration and turning and handling and all these stats, you're always giving up one to get more of the other. It's always like a give and take, but I believe instead of sitting here and just trying to push on one thing and sacrifice the rest, if I create a balanced environment where I can, you know, obviously some weeks I might work more and see my family less, you know what I mean? Some weeks I might work less and see my family more, but as long as I'm always conscious of this balance across the board where I can grow financially every quarter, but I can also grow my relationship with my wife every quarter. I can grow my relationship with my children every quarter. I can improve my health and fitness every quarter even if it's just inches across the board, if I'm consistently growing in all these categories without sacrificing other categories, I would rather grow more steady than have a reckless amount of growth, but come at the sacrifice of my mental health, physical health, relationship with my wife, et cetera. And I think uh, that is something that I'm super proud to say. I can say 
out of all the friends I have, all of them will say I'm the best friend they have because I'm an exceptional friend. I always show up when I, even when I don't need to for all these people, same for my family members, same for my wife and child, same for my team members. Um, and, and I'm very proud to say I haven't sacrificed those things just to make money. I could have made probably 20, 30 X the money that I have right now at the sacrifice of my family, of my friendships, of my health, of all these other things. But what's the point of it at that point? Uh, and so I think I define success as balanced growth across the board. Um, you can prioritize certain things in different seasons, but as long as you're not fully like giving up on other things or sacrificing them uh, just to make more money or to have a six pack or whatever it is, as long as you're balanced in that growth, I think that is how I personally define success. If so, I know a Dude, I know a million people that make tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I can tell the ones that I want advice from are the ones who have a happy relationship with their wife and their yep. kids and they're making that money and they're in the shape that Coach JC is in. Those yeah. are the people I want advice from. I don't I don't care if you make two hundred million dollars and you're fat, you can barely walk, and you you've uh you've you know ruined three marriages because of it. Like Yep. Like, what are you going to teach me how to make money? I, I don't care about that, dude. I want to know how to make money while being healthy, while maintaining my relationship with my wife and kids, while having these things at the same time. It's not, it, you don't need to give up to go. You can do them all at the same time and just take a more steady approach. So that's my, that's my view on success as a whole, man. Dude, I love it, bro. I love it. I mean, you're, you're, you're preaching, man. Powerful stuff. We could talk about that all day. Um, let's get, let, let's pause and give a shout out to your wife. I think it's very important. You know, I tell people this all the time, especially entrepreneurs, man, being an entrepreneur, being a man, there's a lot of pressure. Like if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, there's a lot of pressure, right? You have to show up and perform. And so I think one of the biggest decisions you can make outside of other, some other decisions, but, um, you know, is definitely who your soulmate is, man, who you marry. Like you got a supportive, amazing wife. She gets the demands of the company. She understands you, why you do what you do. You know, talk about that for a second, how that's been such an asset to you to have her in supporting you and uh, cheering you on and partnering with you. And that's a make or break, man. If you had a wife that's like, why are you working again? What are you doing? Um, so talk about that a little. Give your wife a shout out. Send and Terry a bunch of love right now. But talk about the importance of, you know, who you're connected with in a marriage or relationship and how that relationship has helped strengthen you and making you the man you are today. Yeah. So I think it's actually the most important decision of your life, uh, not one of the. Um, and I recognize I'm, I'm grateful enough to have recognized this at an early age. Right. I see marriages fall apart. Um, I see like even you know, my parents, they're still together. They have a healthy relationship, but I saw them go through some rough times and I recognized how bad and how good a good marriage and wife could be. Right. And how I saw both ends of it. I saw like the seasons when my mom was super supportive of my dad and work and how much more they thrived together as a family and as a relationship and financially versus the time she was unsupportive of it because maybe he was still working when he said he wasn't going to be working anymore. You know what I mean? Um, and so for me uh, at the time, to be honest, uh, I was a player when I met Terry, I was, you know, as jacked as coach JC and I had, you know, three, four girls at a time on my arms at everywhere I went. And that was the kind of person I was. I'm not a player. Uh, I just, I just crush a lot. <laughs> 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 oh man uh, but so yeah so uh, so basically in that process uh I, I found my wife and um i i started talking to her and i just did shit all and i said listen dude like i had a kind of a self-talk with myself like this is the most important thing that i could do in my life this is going to be not only the person that i wake up next to every day until i die this is going to be the person that raises my children you know what i mean yeah. those are those are like two very, very key things uh, to note. And so a couple of things that are important. One, I recognized how important that decision was. And I knew that sacrificing back to balance, sacrificing the growth of my business temporarily to make sure that was a decision that I locked in and had fully done. I felt like securing an amazing wife and mother of your children is one of the most important pillars of your life as a man. Uh, and I recognize, dude, if I can just get this decision out the way now, I will never have to make this decision again. I'll never have to date again. I'll never have to worry about what does my future wife look like? Uh, you know, what is she going to be like? I, I have that done. And with that mentally off your plate and you're not playing that game anymore, you can just focus on your future because you're going to be doing it together. And number two, something important that I did once we started talking for a bit, uh, the first time we really got together because we were long distance, uh, I went on a three hour walk with her and I laid down 
my expectations. I said, listen, the next 10 years, you know, I think I was 24, 25 at the time, 24, probably. I said, listen, the next 10 years, I'm working hard as fuck. I might not come home some nights till 11 o'clock. It is, it's, 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 it's going to be like that. And you got to expect that, but this is what I'm building. And I'm not going to sit here and do this for 10 years and then end up with nothing. I'm going to, I'm going to build something incredible. I'm going to, I'm going to put my head down and this is the season that I'm in in life. I will provide everything that you need financially for you because of it. And I will be there as much as I can as a man, as a father, as a husband. Um, but there will be times, whether it's weeks, whether it's days, sometimes maybe months where I will not be able to be as available as I need to be in this 10 year span because I am sitting here and I'm trying to do something great. And in order for me to do something great, I either need you supporting me or just being neutral and not being, you know, anti-supportive of what I'm trying to do. I'm cool with you doing whatever you want to do. As long as you don't put the pressure on me that I'm doing something wrong by doing it. And as long as we're on the same page and we agree to these terms from day one and the expectations that we have, then I'm totally cool moving forward with this. But I need you to understand as my partner and as my wife, I will do all these things and I will provide the best life possible you can imagine, but it's going to come with a 10 year sacrifice from this day forward. And every time we ever have a conversation, you have any doubt, I'm going to come back and reference the same exact conversation, the same walk that we're on because we both agreed to those. And if, if you agree to that, I will move forward with this relationship and I will give you everything I can. If you don't, then it's better that we decide from now and this day rather than sit here and waste time and, and we're misaligned completely moving forward. And I think that conversation was extremely pivotal pivotal in our relationship being as successful as it is today, honestly. Dude, I love it, bro. You're a beautiful human being. I'm going to ask you this, uh, this question. I'm going to preface it for you. And, and the last question is who, you know, who is Eddie? Um, and so there's three W's that I coach people on and I ask our guests. And the first one is what? It's about vision, right? We asked the, I asked you that earlier. What does winning look like to you? What does success look like? If you don't know where you're going and what you want, you'll never have it, right? Second question is why? Once you know what it is, the vision of what you want, what winning looks like, you know, why? What's the purpose, right? And we talked about that earlier. Why you do what you do? What drives you, right? And so the last question in the last W is who? What, why, and who? And the who is about identity, right? I think so many guys get so caught up, athletes especially I work with, they get so caught up in what they do as a career or their past mistakes or, you know, what somebody told them. When you can figure out who you are identity-wise, right? You, you know, you can really win in life. And a lot of what you do comes down to what you think of you, right? And so if I was to ask, who is Eddie Maloof? Like you're, you're a husband, you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur. Like, what would you want people to say about you? If, if, if I'm your best friend and all these friends you talked about, man, where you're living to give and you're serving your friends and you're showing up over and over, you know, what, 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 what would you say? Who is Eddie? Who, how do you define who Eddie Maloof is? And, and what would you want people to say about you, man? Yeah. Um, it's a hard answer. To, it's a hard answer to give, uh, to be honest. Um, but I'll tell you, like, uh, for me, I, I always say this to, to Terry, like the reason I want to do big stuff is because I, since, since I, since I've been young, man, I've always had like this expectation from my friends and family, like, Oh, Eddie's, Eddie's that guy. Like Eddie's got something that like, I can't explain. And, and, you know, it, 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 dude, it's Eddie. Like every time, like I do something amazing or incredible, they're like, yeah, dude, it's Eddie. Like, what did you expect kind of thing? And it, it kind of became like an expectation to be great and to win in my life. Um, and as I grew, I started recognizing, like, if, if everyone thinks this of me, this must be me. You know, this must be who I am. If like, I, I can sit here and convince myself I'm just a normal guy and all this stuff. But if everyone around me that I touch and meet is telling me these same things, then I have to accept that, that this is the level that I need to play at because it's the expectations that I have. And in doing so, I can impact way more people than anyone else because of that factor that I have. And so instead of selfishly carrying that torch for myself and for my own financial gain or whatever the case is, if I can just play bigger, I can impact way more people across the world. And I can proudly say, even at this young age, like I have impacted tens of thousands of people to whether it's coaching on their agencies to go and develop a career and build that out or to completely transform their businesses by being involved in it or just to mentor them in business or in their personal relationship, whatever it is. And so uh, who is Eddie it would be like, Ed Eddie is, is the person that like, can, can come in and, and find the, the, the thing that you can't see in your life that, that 
you know, he can tell you what it is that you need to change or tweak or that one little shift and change that you need in your life to, to change the rest of your life or the rest of your business completely forward. And, you know, I just want to be a person that can go and like spread that light and touch as many people as I possibly can. And I'll tell you, man, it, it comes with a lot of sacrifice, not just like time and effort and money and all these things, but like, even like, you know, with, with my own wife and my relationship, right? Like even she says, you give too much to other people. Like yeah. sometimes I just want you to give it to me and our daughter instead of giving it to everyone else. And so it comes yeah. at a cost to go and spread, uh, that kind of, uh, impact in the world. But you know, when people talk about me, I think that's what, that's what I want them to say. And I think that's what they are going to say just kind of based on how, how I've been doing it so far. So come on, bro. I love who you are, man. You're, you're, you're a leader. You know, you're a dad, you're a husband, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. Man, when I think of Eddie, I think of strong, man. I think of courageous. I think of, you know, you got a great, you're intense, bro. You got intense personality. You know, you're super <laughs> fun. You're super fun. But I think that some of the words you said in there, man, you live your life to give, man. Since since I've known you, like, I don't know what kind of muscles you have under that jersey, but the strongest muscle that you do have, man, is that heart, man. I've watched you. You know, and I'm a big observer of people, and that's because this is how I live my life to give, man. And and, and you're loving, you're super compassionate, um, and you care about people, bro. You have a heart of gold. Like, you're the kind of guy that, you know, people want to go to battle with as a friend. I can tell that, you know, and so keep showing up who you are. You're also a crazy example of what's possible, man. When you have a burning desire and a passion and, and you commit and you're sold out, I think you're a living example for other people to watch and say, man... I, 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 if Eddie did it, I can do it, bro. You're making a difference, bro. God's not finished with you yet. Your grace days are ahead of you, man. I'm excited about the legacy you're going to leave, man. You're a world changer, bro. And so I just appreciate who you are. And I want to ask you two more questions as we close, because I want to respect your time. But um, talking about who he Eddie is and all the stuff you have going on, you know, habits are a very big thing. Routines and rituals and systems. Like I, I try to run my life off of habits and routines and rituals. When every time I get away from that, that stuff in business or life, man, I, I start to make decisions off of feelings. And, and, and so to be who you are the, 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 and get done what you get done, what's some of the winning habits or routines or rituals personally or professionally that you'd say it's not an occasional thing, right? When I coach people, I put everyday morning routines in place, everyday evening. What's some of the everyday things that Eddie does to be the leader, the business owner, the husband, the dad to win? We're talking about winning today. What's some of those habits and rituals that you do every single day, even when you don't feel like it, that set you up to win and be who you are? Uh, believe it or not, I work out every day. Uh, Why you say believe least... it or not? Why you say believe <laughs> it or not? Because I don't look like you, man. You know what I mean? You, you look, look like you work out every day. I work. I look like I work out here and there. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but that, that look, um, not only for physical stimulation, but for mental stimulation, I think it's super important. Um, it, it gets you going, it gets the blood flow going, it gets you active moving. And I, that's something I, I believe in heavily. Uh, number two, I start all my meetings at 9 AM. Um, and I see a lot of people like, Oh, I don't take morning meetings. I do them in the afternoon all this other stuff. But for me, if it's, if, if I have to show up, uh, I have to show up. Right. If I, if I have a day where I maybe don't have a meeting till three o'clock in the afternoon, my morning might go to waste as good as my habits are because I don't have to show up. But if I have to show up at nine as my best self right out the gate at the beginning of the day, you know, to start the day with the team, whatever it is, then I carry that energy throughout the day and I can keep that consistency going as opposed to, you know, I used to just like not necessarily set up morning meetings every day. Cause I was like, I don't want to show up in the morning every day that I have to like, that's stupid to do that. I'm the business owner. I should do what I want. But when I show up at nine every day for a morning meeting with whatever team I'm meeting with that day, that starts my day. Like no matter what I could have, I could, I could sleep at 3 AM for whatever reason. And I could miss the gym in the morning, but no matter what, I have to be there at 9 AM to start my day and to kick it off and to, to be ready and to win at that day. Um, and so as small and as stupid as that sounds, man, it, it makes such an impact. And I, I can clearly tell in my company, like, the, the time I started forcing everyone to have a meeting to start the day at 9 a.m. was the day that our company started taking off like crazy because everyone had to show up at 9, not just like clock in or start working or they had to show up. They had to put their camera on. They had to talk and they had to start their day. And I think uh, that that kind of that habit of that morning meeting at that time, I think, is something that a lot of people need to do more because once you carry that momentum, once you start that day, dude, it's hard to derail it, but when, when you don't start, it's hard to get it on. You know what I mean? Huge. So I love it, bro. 
I love it, man. You know, I, and I ask that question all the time because there's an old saying, time for everything equals time for nothing, right? Like if you're listening right now, I think from Eddie, there's so many big takeaways in this episode, man. We're so blessed for you to join us. But like, stop overthinking, speed wins. Like you've moved with such a speed. Like think about what you've done in five short years. Like forget your excuses. If you're listening today, take action. Like I, I want to live so big, Eddie, that my actions give people permission to say, if JC could do it, I could do it. And I think there's listeners and viewers today that are listening and saying, man, yeah, I want Eddie lives so big, man. He got all that done. Man, if Eddie could do it, man, it gives me permission that I can do it. So if you're listening today, stop overthinking, speed wins, forget your excuses, take action, man. If I can do it, if Eddie can do it, you can do it. And, and, and I think, I think you, you're doing such a great job because people will follow you if you give them something to follow, man. And so you're leading, man, and people are going to follow. And, and if you're listening today, I think, you know, be motivated. Give pe give them a reason to follow you. I ask myself that every day. Why would somebody follow me today? Why would a team member buy into me today? I think you're giving people a reason to follow you, man. And, and I honor you for that. And I want you to talk about that as we close today. Just all the stuff you have going on, you know, obviously for media, what do you do there real quick? How could somebody find you if they're a good fit for what you do there? And then obviously the coaching programs, the events you put on, you have a lot of opportunity for people that now want to develop a skill set in the digital world or blow up their brand to work with you. Obviously, you don't take on everybody, but there's people listening that might be able to benefit. How do they find you? Give just an overview, man. Brag a little, bro. You got a lot of cool things going on. The TikTok course, the trainings for, for agencies. Just talk to us about all that and where people can find those things, brother. Those assets. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can find me on Instagram, Eddie Malouf. Uh, there's a lot of fake ones, so make sure you type it right and you hit the one with the blue check. Uh, but I'll tell you, I got a lot of free game on, on YouTube. I've been recently going crazy on YouTube and posting a lot of really good content. And if you really want to learn, if you want to get inside my head, you want to see how I think, how I operate, all the things that I do and all the lessons that I've spent millions of dollars and years and years of years learning all condensed into one spot, I think that's probably the best place um, to, to learn more. And I think from there, you can kind of figure it out how to get in contact with us if you need to. But um, my YouTube is probably the best spot. So if you want to get some games, subscribe there. Uh, I drop content multiple times a week at this point. So, uh, and if you're an agency owner, if you're in the agency space and you want to take your game to the next level, we got an event in January in Atlanta this year um, called Agency Founders. It's the third year we put it on. We get about uh, 200 people max into a room, all seven and eight figure uh, agency owners. All the speakers do millions of dollars a month in their agency and they've grown them to, to some incredible heights financially. Uh, and they're literally sharing information that they don't share online. Some of these guys don't even have a social media. Uh, and I bring them into the room to show exactly uh, the game, the, the high level stuff, the stuff that you don't hear in courses because most people teaching in courses only got to 100K a month and then they, they're teaching you how to do that. But to get to that next level, to build a company, to build an infrastructure and to make that international impact uh, that, that I'm trying to make, you know, it takes a different level of thinking and a way of doing things. And that's a good place to connect and get in the right rooms with the right people. But besides that, yeah, just look me up, type in my name on uh, YouTube and Instagram, and hopefully I can provide much more free value to you. If you're listening to this podcast today. I love it, man. And, and absolutely, man, I'd, I'd, I'd back you on that hundred percent. Your value that you give on YouTube is sick, bro. I mean, it's, it's so much value on your YouTube channel that people would, you know, pay money for. So guys get to his YouTube channel. Eddie, is there anything I always like to ask the guests is, is there anything that we didn't talk about today that you want to touch on? Is there any last minute thoughts for the viewer, for the listener, anything that's on your heart that you want to say? I just want to make sure to give you that opportunity before we close the show today, brother. Uh, I just want to say one, it didn't take me five years to do this. It actually took me three. And I say that to say, uh, if you're listening to this shit, you can go do whatever the fuck you want. You can, as long as you have a plan and as long as you stick to the plan and as long as you go and execute every single day in and out, I promise you, you can do whatever you want. You want to become the president. You can be the fucking president. You know what I mean? You want to, you want to open a company you can open a company you want to change the world you can change the world it just takes you sticking into it every single day in and day out whether it's hard whether it's easy you're going to have mixed emotions personal things are always going to happen in your life there's always going to be someone sick there's always going to be uh, a death in the family there's always going to be injuries there's always going to be a million things that you are going to go through and you're going to go through those things in life whether or not you do big shit so you might as well do big shit uh, and, and try to make an impact in this world and do something bigger as a, you know, as opposed to just playing it small and safe the whole way. And 
I think the world uh, has too many safe players right now. And I think, I think it's time you, you step up to the plate, take some risk, play big and win all day, baby. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That's my guy. Hey, this is coach JC. This is the win, win all day podcast show with our amazing guest, Eddie Maloof, man. We love you. We're honored. I like to end every show this way, brother. If you could just say for us and our listeners and our audience, I am Eddie Maloof. I am a winner. I will win and win all day. I am Eddie Maloof. I am a winner. I will win and win all day. Can you do that? I am Eddie Maloof. I am a winner. What was the last one? I don't and know I will win more. and win all day. <laughs> and I will win. I will win all day, baby. <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go, baby. Hey, who thank loves you? Thank you so much, man. Hey, thank you for being with us, man. Much love, guys. This is Coach JC. One last time reminding you that you were born a winner. So go in and win all day. We'll get at you next time, fam. Man, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if today's episode meant something to you, if it, if it blessed you in any way, I want to encourage you to take a screenshot and share it on social media. And tag me, Coach JC, so that I can give you a shout out, baby. And if you are ready to go to the new level, the next level, and win more in life, and build a life of passion fueled by purpose, then the Win All Day Personal Development Coaching might be a perfect fit for you. Just visit CoachJC.com to get started. Or, or maybe you want to do what you love and make money doing it. The greatest business to start right now is your personal brand business. Taking your knowledge, your wisdom, expertise, and your life experiences and sharing that with the world and getting paid to do it. If you want to build your purpose-driven, highly profitable personal brand, visit winalldaypersonalbrand.com, fill out the application, and one of my team members will be in touch. Or maybe you're here and you need a breakthrough in your physical body. Maybe you're needing or wanting to take control of your health, lose weight, get fit, and build strength. You can do it with our online workouts, nutrition coaching, and accountability over at Win All Day Strength. Dot com. Who loves you? I do.